Uh, here we are, another Redneck Sprite Outdoors thoughts from the office. Uh, today I'm just going to do a real quick thing on case trap tips. Just a couple little tips. I, uh, you know, I get my ideas. People ask me questions or I see something written where a question's been asked on a post or something like that. And it's just easier to do a video than it is to uh, to do a uh, post because I can't spell grammar sucks and it talk becomes easier to be hands free. <clears throat> so uh, one of the biggest questions asked is about baits and lures for cages and. Uh, gonna let out two little they're not secrets to experienced people but they are not well known and we kind of keep things to ourselves but it's getting out more and more and more so I'm just gonna let these two little things out um, to folks of course everybody knows that number one any cage you don't just flop a cage, put a jar of Skippy peanut butter in it, and you're gonna get consistent wildlife control specialist results. Yeah, you'll catch you'll catch the dumb, stupid raccoons. Yes, absolutely. You will catch the 80 percenters. Absolutely. But when you're on a job and you're getting paid anywhere from three hundred to six hundred dollars for that job, okay. You better come off as a professional. You better come off with knowing what you're doing. You better come off with getting the job done. So, uh, and three to six hundred dollars is not the total job. That's just the traffic portion of the job. So yes, I've gotten six hundred dollars for one raccoon. Absolutely. Don't go grabbing your wildlife control card real quick. Think you're going to do that all the time because you better have an idea what you're doing before you do that. Because a $600 raccoon is going to be a pain in the butt customer. It's going to be a pain in the butt structure. It's going to be a pain in the butt social atmosphere, meaning neighbors and animal activists and everything else. And it's just going to be a not so fun, rather not do it than do it. Okay, so don't, don't, I don't think you're going to get rich in wildlife control the whole time. But anyway, getting back to the cage traps. What's the first thing I preach about with cage traps? Position. Trap position. Trap placement. Those two things, well, they're the same? No, they're really not. Trap placement deals with your location. The exact spot that you want that cage to be setting. Okay, that's just what I preach at. Uh, you want a full blown out uh, explanation of that? Come to the South Jersey Trap and the School. Um, so placement is the location that the exact spot you want to catch the raccoon position is which way that rat, that cat that cage strap is is facing All right, and again always want the door to where the animal's coming from don't want him coming to the side don't want him coming to the back you want him to come to the door first I use double door. No, I don't. I don't like double doors. I hate double doors. I have a couple double doors, and they're great for trail sets, blind sets. But if I have a double door, I'm setting one door. That's all I'm setting. That's me. It's not you. That's me. All right. So um, that was the placement and positioning. Want to learn more about those? Again, come to the South Jersey Trap and the Snaring School. We'll go into detail. I'll, I'll bore you to death with that stuff. Baiting strategy? I'm not going to go into that detail either. I'm going to tell you about two unknown scents, or two unknown forms of scent that I will use that I don't normally tell folks, but it's getting out, so I might as well just say it. Number one. Beaver caster. What? Beaver caster? 
absolutely. Beaver caster, bar none. You want to catch a 20 percenter? You're having trouble catching that raccoon? Beaver caster. Now, I use our Rednecks Pride Outdoors tinctured beaver caster or tinctured beaver caster paste. That's what I'll use. And you're just using a little bit. You're not using, you know, you're using about the size of a pea if you, if, if, if that, if that. A lima bean would be extremely, uh, that'd be for a really, really spooky raccoon that I have that I'm really trying to work. And I'm going to use a lima bean sides in a couple of different spots. But, you know, typically beaver caster in a little liquid form or paste form in the back of that trap behind the trouble. That way when you get him in with your baiting strategy, you now add that little bit of, uh, whoa, what's that type of thing, okay? Um, wind direction this is another thing I'm going to cover heavy when I'm, not today, but I hope cover heavy in when I'm doing the uh, cage trapping instructions. All right, so beaver caster, never without it. It's a lot of money, they're expensive, but you know what, when you're catching that type of a wildlife control coon, you're making that type of money, uh, you need it caught, because people are going to be a pain if you're not getting it caught. The second less known type of scent, as a type of scent, I'm gonna use is going to be gland lure. Especially if I'm in a location. Well, realistically, you know, if, if I got sows with pups, I'm not going to use a clam horn. But if I'm in a spot where I'm males, boars, communal den, I'm expecting to catch 10, 12 raccoons out of this old abandoned house that's been abandoned for 10 years. Raccoon crap is everywhere. The smudge marks is up and down. And, I mean, just a ton of sign. You know, it's all mainly going to be boars. They're on their eight to ten day circuit. All right, I'm going to use a gland lure. I'm going to use fox ear or fox gland, coyote gland, bobcat gland, muskrat gland, mink gland, and if I'm certain that it's all older males, older males. Okay, that list I just gave you will catch young males and older males. Uh, but if you're looking at year, year old males and above, I will even use raccoon gland. All right, you're not gonna catch your females on it. Well, I'm not gonna say you're not because I have. You wonder why and what was wrong with her. Maybe she's identifying as a male, I don't know. But um, raccoon gland works really good in a high concentrated area because they're already used to smelling the other males that's there. Now you, they know these other males. So you say you got 10 male raccoons that's used in this place in a 10 day period. So you have one, one male here tonight and tomorrow night and then he leaves and then another male comes in the next night after that. You know, so they're on an eight to 10 day schedule in my area, our circuit. In your area, you've got to figure out what your circuit is. All raccoons have a circuit. Um, but, you know, they're used to smelling those other males when they're coming in. Now by adding gland lore, whether it's male or female, whatever, whatever your gland lore is, if you get if, if redneck pride or redneck pride gland lore, we, we have two different types, one female mainly and one male mainly. Okay, so um, when you're using that, you're mainly going after the older boars, you know, those two, three, four year old boars. All right, so trying to make a short, short, sweet, never comes out short and sweet. Got thunder coming in, rain starting to crank down. Better pay attention to what I'm doing. So I'll see you next time, Rednecks Pride Outdoors. Thoughts from the office.